Let's go back now to our top story, and that is the coronavirus uh, it's spreading across the world. Italy, of course, one of the hardest hit countries. Let's speak now to Flavia Riccardo, who's a virologist at the Italian National Institute of Health. She joins us now live from Rome. Madam, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the new measures that the government has put in place uh, across the nation have been in place for about a day and a half. But, of course, we had seen a, a lockdown, really, of northern Italy, a red zone in some parts of northern Italy. I suppose the question is, is it too early to see whether these measures are actually working in containing the virus? Well, what I can say is that we're starting to see some uh, good initial signs from the first affected areas. And uh, this is also a reason why we really felt the need to expand and to, um, you know, take this uh, to a next step. And also what this is also helping is really to gain an awareness and a community engagement that this is something unusual and we need to react in a different way than we would normally. You've obviously been following the developments of this virus since people started to know about it. What would you say the reaction has been from the average person, I guess, in Italy who perhaps earlier saw it just as something on the news and now it's having an impact on everyone? Do you think that the measures pushed by the government are actually having their intended effect, that they're being followed? I think that they're definitely helping people to follow them because, of course, if you are in a condition where you have to go to overcrowded places that are open and accessible and that's the only place to go, it's hard, it's hard to actually enact those. So definitely these are a really good baseline to gain the awareness and to make a number of things possible. But also a lot of work is being done in terms of communication. Um, there was a difficulty, I think, in the early stages to really understand what this was about. Uh, of course, in the scientific field, this had been known for a while. WHO had issued a public health emergency very early on. Uh, but this, uh, you know, coming to everybody had to be translated and had to be understood properly. So I think this now is something that is happening. People are starting, I think, to gain awareness and we're really trying to push and, and explain why uh, certain measures are in place. Coronavirus has obviously been hitting countries around the world. And for a while, South Korea seemed to be a country that other countries could emulate, a country that perhaps had managed to keep it relatively under control, except that in the past few hours, we've had news that the number of cases there has increased. What do you think the lessons are then in how to handle this virus and how to try, obviously, to contain it by the way that people uh, interact, but just more widely, you know, looking for a vaccine, seeing if people build immunity, just knowing it? a little bit more. I think what we learned in Italy is that this is uh, unfortunately a, a virus that spreads very well. It's a new virus, which means a lot of susceptible people can get sick at the same time. Uh, I think we shouldn't underestimate it. I think we should be very careful about uh, how to move and move properly and fast with the right level of proportion. Also in Italy, clearly the situation is not the same across the country. There are different levels of action that are required. Uh, and I think it's also very important early on to um, get people on board because finally this is a battle that we'll all will together. This really needs to be something which we're all fighting against in our everyday life and changing our behaviours. Why do you think Italy specifically was so badly hit? I, it's early to say that. Uh, I think we'll understand it more as we get more data also on how the virus has evolved and will help us understand how the circulation happened in the past. But the fact that we found uh, an initial case with no epidemiological links to known uh, areas of transmission or contacts, the fact that it was not in a major city, uh, and, the, and the fact that we found so many positive contacts at first suggests that it had been circulating for some time. Where and when and how this first arrived in Italy, it's early to say. Uh, but it might be that uh, it, it, there has been a circulation that has been mimicked by the fact that, unfortunately, we were experiencing our influenza peak season. So this is one of the uh, running ideas, and uh, I think we'll get a better understanding as, uh, as we gain more data and more evidence. Flavia Riccardo, virologist at the Italian National Institute of Health. Madam, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.